Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we will be learning about Tailwind CSS. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. What is Tailwind CSS and what makes it different from regular CSS? Tailwind CSS is a utility-first framework that offers many predefined classes to help you, as they say, rapidly build modern websites without ever leaving your HTML. Other popular CSS libraries and frameworks like Bootstrap, Material UI, and others, they're more opinionated. And that is to say, when I see a website styled with Bootstrap or Material UI, I visually recognize it. Tailwind CSS applies one CSS rule at a time. It just uses predefined classes. And that makes it very flexible, and you can still style an element any way you want. Now, the strength of Tailwind is that once you learn the classes, you can apply it very quickly, definitely faster than writing CSS from scratch. You can see some of those example class names right here on the homepage for Tailwind CSS. Now, that said, let's look at an example. Those that say they prefer not to use Tailwind CSS usually talk about how many classes it adds to their HTML and they think it adds clutter. But I'm going to show you how to work around that today too. And I really think you're going to enjoy learning Tailwind CSS. So let's get started. Step one is to make sure you already have some knowledge of HTML and CSS. If you're unsure of your HTML and CSS skills, I recommend completing my beginner's courses for both. And I'll link to these in the description. I'll be assuming you do know CSS during this tutorial. And if you already know CSS, learning Tailwind CSS becomes much, much easier. Step two is to make sure you have all the web dev tools you need. We'll be using the Chrome browser in this tutorial, and I'll give a link to where you can download Chrome if you don't have it. We'll be using the Visual Studio Code code editor, and I'll give this link in the description where you can download Visual Studio Code as well. Now, I'm hoping you're already familiar with those. We'll also install an extension or two for Visual Studio Code once we have that up and running. And then we need to install Node.js. You will not be writing any JavaScript. That's not what this is about, but you do need the Node Package Manager to compile your Tailwind CSS code. And don't worry if that sounds complicated. I'll show you how easy it is to do that. But go to the nodejs.org webpage and download the version that's recommended for most users that you should see over here. Whatever that version is, is the one you want. Go ahead and install that, and then we'll go to VS Code, that is Visual Studio Code, and if you haven't installed that, of course, do that as well. And then we'll look at our version of Node. Here, I've got my Visual Studio Code pulled up right now. I'll make it full screen. And I'm going to press Control and the back tick. And in a terminal window like this, we can type Node dash V after you have installed it. And you can see what version you have. You can see I have version 16.16.0 right now. Now in Visual Studio Code, I have an empty folder open and I just named my empty folder lesson one. So go ahead and create an empty folder on your computer and open that up in Visual Studio Code as well. After you've done that, we want to go to the extensions icon over here on the left and we'll check to see if you have live server installed. Type live space server and you can see I've got the live server extension. I'll click on that. It shows us the full extension. I've already got it installed. And when you have it installed, it should then say uninstall and disable. And we don't want to do either one of those because we do want to use this. It will provide our web page and it will automatically refresh it when we make changes. But there is one setting change we want to make while we're working with our CSS and especially Tailwind CSS. So click the little gear here for the settings and then choose extension settings. Once you're there, it will highlight this in the bar. You can just press space. And what we want to search for is full reload. And you'll find live server settings full reload. By default, this is not checked. And you'll want this checked because it says live server does not inject the CSS changes or it says by default live server injects the CSS changes without full loading of the browser, full reloading of the browser. We want that full reloading because we'll want to see our CSS changes right away also. So 
go ahead and enable that for live server and make sure you have your live server enabled. And now we're ready to begin working with Tailwind. So make sure that you have created that empty folder like we talked about. Now I'm going to press Control and the back tick again. You could also go to the terminal menu and choose new terminal. Either way, we're opening this terminal window. And what we want to type here is going to be npx. And that comes from that node package manager that I said we needed. That's why we installed Node.js. After that, we want to type Tailwind CSS with no spaces, and then init, I-N-I-T, and press enter. This is going to create a Tailwind config file, and we need that for our project. Now let's go to the file tree, and let's click the little folder icon, and we'll create a new directory here. I'm going to name this build. And then I'm going to create another directory, and I'm going to name it SRC, which is short for source. Now in the build directory, so we'll highlight that, I'm going to create a new file, name it index.html. In the index.html file, I can type one exclamation mark, and this is an Emmet abbreviation, so when I press tab, I get the outline of an HTML document already. And notice it's just called document right now. That's fine. We just want to go ahead and save this file. I do that with control S and I can close the terminal to see that full listing here. And you see it's an empty HTML file, but we do have our HTML file now. And that's really all we need to go ahead and set up our config for our content. We need to tell Tailwind where our HTML is so that it can get the classes that we are using to include in the style file that we will create with Tailwind. So what we'll do here inside this content where you see the two brackets, I'm going to put a single quote and then a period, so a dot and a slash, and that means inside of a directory, and we're navigating, by the way, from the config file. So we're going to go dot slash and then into the build directory, so build, then another slash, and then I want to put an asterisk, and then .html. And this says, don't just look for my index.html, but look for all HTML files that are in this build directory. And from there, I'm just going to control S to save the config file. And now we also created a source directory. So inside of this, let's create a new file, and I'm going to name this input.css. Inside of this input CSS, I'm going to paste these three lines in here, but once you see them, you'll want to put in the same. You put the at symbol, like you have in an email address, and then tailwind, and then a space. The first line says base, the second line says components, and the third line says utilities. What Tailwind does is it compiles the CSS from this input CSS file and it will create it for us inside of the build directory where we tell it to. And so what this does is it pulls in everything that Tailwind defines and then if we want to, we can define our own CSS classes underneath this as well. So I'm just going to save this file as is because this is all it needs right now. You might have noticed VS Code is giving us a warning here as it has the squiggly underline underneath our at tailwind. And if we go ahead and press control back tick once again to open up our terminal window, we can see problems and it says three problems. And then it says an unknown rule at Tailwind. Well, this isn't really a problem with Tailwind, but it's something we can get rid of in VS Code. So let's go to the File menu, then go to Preferences, and then Settings. From there, we can search for Unknown, and there it is, our CSS linter. It says that's a warning. Let's just set that to Ignore. And now it doesn't give us those problems. It's really not a problem at all. It's just something that is not understood here. So we'll go ahead and eliminate the problem to begin with. And we can close our settings. And we have no more squiggly lines underneath our at tailwind. Let's once again open up a terminal window. And we'll use npx again. So we'll type npx. And now we want to type tailwind css and we're going to type dash i for input. And then we need to specify where our input file is. And it is in the dot source, so it would be dot slash src. We're looking once again from our root into the source directory and then at the input.css file. So after dot slash source, it would be slash input.css. And then we have dash o for output and we want it to output the compiled CSS inside of dot slash 
build slash CSS and then slash style dot CSS. So let's go ahead and press enter and we should see that we get our CSS directory created inside of the build directory and inside of that directory we now have a style.css. Let's quickly look at this file and I'll close the terminal once again and you can see it contains the Tailwind styles and really it's just minimal because we're not using them all. So we've got 500 and some lines. So those are the base styles essentially. Once we start using more, Tailwind is smart enough to say, hey, they're using those different styles that we have in our library and we need to include those when we compile this file. It was previously called the just-in-time compiler, but now that we're at Tailwind version 3.1, it's already included. So we don't even have to say we're using the just-in-time compiler. It just does it automatically. That is great. So after we've created our style CSS, let's go into this index.html and now let's add a link tag. So we'll have link and it's going to be CSS and it provides the style.css already if you choose it from that drop down IntelliSense menu like I did. If not, just make sure you type in what we have, but you also need to add that CSS folder because here we're at the index file, then we have to look inside of the CSS directory and then at the style.css. Let's go ahead and add some content to our web page. I'm going to type a div and then with Emmet abbreviations, I can just type a period and then the class names that I want afterwards. So I'm going to type bg-emerald-500, which is a color class name in Tailwind CSS. After that, I'm going to type w-52 that sets a width and then h-52 that sets a height, press tab, and you can see all three of these classes were applied to this div. Now I'm going to save the HTML. We need to bring the terminal back up. And once again, we need to compile the CSS. If not, this won't be included. So we can pull this up to once again compile the CSS like we have in the past, but what might even be better if we were to type the same line, which says npx tailwind css dash i, and then of course highlights where the input CSS is, and then dash O for the output, highlights where we want the output, and I pressed the up arrow, by the way, to pull my command back up, so that's the down arrow, here's the up arrow, so it just brings up what I used last time. After that, two dashes and watch. Now, after we put this in motion, it will continue to run and it will watch for any changes we make. So any classes we add to our HTML will recompile that CSS file and we'll see those changes on our page. So let's go ahead and press enter now with the watch flag added. You can see it is rebuilding and it has completed the style CSS and we're ready to take our web page live with live server. So I'll close the terminal that will continue to run. And for live server, we can right click and choose open with live server. We could also use the keystrokes it shows here. Or what I often do is go to the bottom of Visual Studio Code and just click go live, which is right here. So that's what I'm going to do now. It should pull up the browser. It loads our page and it's a lot of bright white, but it does have this emerald green square that I created as well. I drug CSS or I drug Visual Studio Code over here to the left and then I'm going to press Alt, or I'm sorry, Control B to hide that file tree. So now we can see our web page on the left and our browser on the right. Let's add a couple of more classes to our div. So I'm going to say rounded-full, and after that I'm also going to add shadow-2xl. And then I'm going to save and we have a circle with a shadow. Now you might notice as I am typing these different classes, so I'll go ahead and delete the shadow again and retype it. So shadow-2xl, I'm getting some IntelliSense here that is telling me what is available from Tailwind. Now let's go ahead and install the extension so you get the same. I'm going to pull Visual Studio Code back over to a full screen temporarily, click the extensions icon, and let's back this up and here we'll choose Tailwind or what we'll search for is Tailwind CSS and then IntelliSense. And I have this installed and this will be very helpful for you as well because the IntelliSense will pop up a menu showing you those colors, showing you those other classes you can choose from as you start to type. And that is very helpful, very useful 
Visual Studio Code extension to go ahead and add. And it is official. It is from Tailwind Labs as well. Okay, let's go back to our code now. I'll close out the IntelliSense tab. I'll press Control B to hide the file tree again and drag Visual Studio Code over to the left side of my screen so we can see what we're building on the right. Now let's say I would like to center our circle in the center of the page. Right now I haven't set the height to be the full height of the page yet, so that's something I would normally do on the body element. Let's go to the Tailwind CSS website and use their website to search for settings. And we can just search for min height. And this is where it's very handy to already know CSS because the names that Tailwind uses is very much like the actual CSS rule that you would set. So when I search for min height, I can bring that up. I find all of these different settings and I want a min height of 100 VH. That's what I would use viewport units in uh, CSS. So here the class is min dash H dash screen. So on the body, I'm going to set a class and set this to min dash h dash screen. And then I'm also going to put a couple of other classes. So I'm going to put a grid and say, this is a display grid. All I have to do is type grid there and then place content dash center as well. And with those classes applied, we'll save. And now let's go back to our page and our circle is in the center. So I can't overemphasize enough how helpful the Tailwind website is. And it's so easy to just search for what you're looking for. So if I wanted to look at shadows, I could type in shadow. Here's the drop shadow. And then we see all the different classes that are available. And it's telling you the actual CSS that it sets. Also, We'll go back to the page we're creating. Once you have that IntelliSense installed, when you go ahead and mouse over one of the classes you have applied, you can see the CSS that the class is actually applying. So here I'm over the place content center and you can see what that actual style, what that actual class is in CSS. Okay, now let's say we wanna place another circle inside of the circle we have. So let's go ahead and make this first circle a grid also. We'll also add place content center to our first circle. And now inside this circle, we'll go ahead and add another div. And from there, we'll add a background of teal-200 and then W-32 for the width, height-32, and then rounded-full, and press tab, and we get all of that. So let's go ahead and save our file now. And we have a circle within our circle. And before we're finished with this small example, let's create one more. So now we'll say div, and then we'll add BG-red-500, now W-16 and height-16, and then rounded dash full once again, press tab and we have another div, but what we didn't add was on the parent here, we need a grid and once again, a place dash content dash center and we save. And now we have a bullseye on our page. I'm going to temporarily drag Visual Studio Code back to the full screen and control B to show the file tree. Let's look at our input.css. One thing we can add here possibly is a background that we want, something that's custom. But before we do, I guess we should see if it exists inside of Tailwind. So I'll bring this back over. Let's go full screen on our search here and let's search for gradient. So gradient and we have gradient color stops that came up, maybe linear gradient. Let's see what we get there. And here are linear, linear gradients and we can easily see how to define those here in Tailwind. But what I am not seeing, and I'll search for that as well, is a radial gradient, no radial. So there's a few things that Tailwind may not supply, or maybe I didn't find it and I need to look a little further. But either way, I'm going to define a radial gradient class here for my background inside of this input CSS. Remember I said these three lines bring in the Tailwind libraries, the base, the components, the utilities, but we can also define our own classes. So I'm going to put radial dash blue, and then inside of this, I'll put background, and I will set it to a radial gradient, and I'm going to start with a light yellow, and then I'll end with sky blue. Once I save that, I'm going to go to the HTML, and back here on the body, I'm just going to apply that at the top here. So radial dash blue as a class to add. Now let's drag this over 
and we'll look at our page once again and you can see we have a light blue and it's light with that light yellow in the center and it just works its way out to this nice light blue as well. So now you can see my code is all scrunched and it doesn't look too great. I'll bring this back over to a full screen. It's going to look a little bit better but you can see compared to normal HTML we would write where the CSS is abstracted to another file adding all of these classes does add quite a bit but there is a way to work around this and again it's with a VS Code extension. So let's search for inline fold and see what we get. Here we go inline fold a custom decorator that folds matching content it says. So let's go ahead and we can scroll down to look at more of what this does but let's go ahead and install and let's see what we get after it's installed. So it's installed now. This says uninstall and disable. So it looks like everything is good. Go back to our project and close that out. Look what happened to our row of classes. They're all now dropped down to these three dots. Makes our page look much more organized. And then when we need to work in one of those lines, we just click in the line. And when we click away, it hides those classes again. So this inline fold extension really removes one of the big complaints that I've heard about Tailwind CSS, that it makes the HTML clunky or filled with too many classes. This way, we only have to look at the classes when we're working on that specific element. So I will link to all of this code in the description under the course resources. And really this intro to Tailwind may be all you need to get started working with Tailwind CSS because the more you work with it, the easier easier it will become. And if you already know CSS, you can pretty much just go to the site and search for whatever property, whatever rule you're looking for, and you'll probably find it on the site and know what name to use. And also that IntelliSense extension will help. But if you continue with me on this series, we're going to have some fun and create a project that will, of course, help you get familiar with Tailwind CSS and learn more along the way. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.